Let's get ready to story. Jeffrey David Bohm, born November 30th, my birthday. Chef, I'm glad we share a birthday now. November 30th, 1946, not my birthday. G to January 24th, 2000. Well, he died tragically young. I'm sorry to hear that. He was an American screenwriter and film producer. Jeff, not unlike yourself. He is known for writing the screenplays for Lethal Weapon 2 and 3, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Inner Space, and The Lost Boys. In parentheses, Keeper Sutherland offered to buy my wife a drink once. I'm just going to throw that out there. Bohm's films had a, com <laughs> had a total gross of over U.S. $1 billion. Jeff, let's see some of that cash here tonight. He was educated at Sacramento State College and UCLA. Bohm died at 53. And yet he's going to tell you a story. Come on up, Jeff. Comedy gold. <laughs> Connor, first of all, I want to thank you for not making me the first person to touch the Heinlein here in Dunmore tonight. I know. <laughs> because, you know, the person who wrote Inner Space in her space would obviously be the first person you'd think of for that. But we're not here, thank you, thank you. I'm not known for my joke telling, I'm here for my storytelling. So I had never really thought of taking a road trip when I was a kid. But then when I was in college and then grad school, I did my master's thesis on Jack Kerouac who wrote a famous American book called On the Road. Not Charles Kerouac's On the Road. This is Jack Kerouac, who used to take Benzedrine and uh, every alcohol known to man and then write in one fell swoop. So when I found myself unceremoniously fired from a very high-profile job in Scranton and felt like taking a suitcase full of bum leads uh, out to Hollywood and becoming a, a big screenwriter, not unlike the other Jeff Bohm, I decided maybe it's time to realize, not the context and the subtext, but maybe the on the road part of on the road. So, living on Taylor Avenue, all my college buddies came up and we hooked up the U-Haul to an Oldsmobile 88. It was a 1998 Oldsmobile 88. And uh, I had nicknamed it Plenty O'Toole from James Bond's novel, uh, Diamonds Are For, no, wait, that's, that's, that's a different story. So the U-Haul's all hooked up. And, you know, all my earthly belongings need to go in this U-Haul, which means slightly 30% fit in the U-Haul. So there my parents are, my college friends, waving goodbye, half my belongings out on the sidewalk. We're ready to go cross-country, moving out to Huntington Beach, California. So we get on to River Street, get on to that exit for 81. We're not even off the off-ramp end. <laughs> The heat gauge goes like this. <laughs> now, I was driving across country with my, one of my best friends, Fred. Fred was my college buddy, and for some reason, Fred is perpetually on a spinal tap high of 11, when he doesn't need to be. And we don't know why he hasn't have a, had a stroke or a heart attack up until this day. So of course, he takes the first watch, and getting off the off-ramp, and uh, Fred is like, the car's been reading! And I said, well, you know, what the hell do we do? He says, we well, turn on the heat! <laughs> so I'm three miles from my house on a 48-mile cross-country trip, and I'm sweating like a whore in church. <laughs> I'm not even a montage yet. <laughs> well, we survived Pennsylvania. And then we get into Ohio. Has anybody ever driven through Ohio? No. Yeah. It's like hell's waiting room. <laughs> Except there's not a stack of uh, highlight magazines and seals and craw playing in the background. But that might have happened too. I, I, I wasn't still really driving that watch. But we made it through Ohio. And of course, you know, you're young and you have some piss and vinegar in your blood, you know? And we had a plan down. We're going to go the upper route of uh, the country. You know, we're going to see the dark hills of Dakota. We're going to see Mount Rushmore. And then end up at Devil's Tower, where they filmed uh, uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. You know, it's a very exciting trip. And then. Someone reminded us on the way that 
you know, it, it's kind of snowing and it's icy because it is February. <laughs> because I chose to leave on Valentine's Day. <laughs> because I'm a romantic son of a bitch. <laughs> so being icy and snowy, of course we, he says, uh, well, where the hell are we going to go now? We're not going to go to Dakota. Do you know anybody? I said, yes, I, I, I have a friend, Nate. And, uh, you know, he lives in uh, Indianapolis, in Bloomington, Indiana. You know, he says, uh, and we're both shaking, and, and the car's swerving in the ice storm, and, you know, the u is making it swerve all the more. And he goes, uh, do you think we can get a drink? <laughs> I said, Nate's a Bible thumper, so you have, <laughs> you have just as good a chance of getting converted as you do of getting a drink tonight. So we, we crash with Nate and realize we have to adjust our tour a little bit. And so we went through Kansas. Yes, Kansas. And we parked for the night in Topeka. And, uh, you know, we're trying to find a good place to angle it, and uh, we go into this hotel, and uh, the guy says, oh, here's your room keys, etc." And, and, and uh, you know, I say, is there a room possibly overlooking this U-Haul? Because, you know, 30% of my earthly belongings are just sitting there, you know, waiting for the great people of Topeka to come steal them. And the guy goes, um, sir, um, that doesn't happen around here. To which Fred says, Pal, I'm from North Philadelphia. You leave a Tic Tac in the tray, uh, in the ashtray, you're fucked. <laughs> None of my earthly belongings uh, were stolen in Kansas. I still have many of them that I can vouch for. So we start making our way south. We're going through Oklahoma. We're going to Texas. We're making good time. Things are getting left off the agenda left and right because when you're hauling a big U-Haul with this, uh, this machine, this beast, of an Oldsmobile, you suddenly realize, you know, you don't have as much power as you thought. And then when you get into very arid climates like New Mexico and Arizona, you realize you really don't have that much gusto once you get to the mountains. So this Oldsmobile starts having an asthmatic attack <laughs> going up the mountains of Arizona and New Mexico. We got ladies on jazzies passing us out, and we're barely making it. And so this gets dropped, and that gets dropped, and Vegas gets dropped, and all of a sudden, we decide to take the, uh, the off-roads and just, you know, maybe see historic Route 66. Well, the car, of course, gets overheated, and we're on an Indian reservation. Of course, of course. <laughs> when you're crossing cross-country, you have to end up on an Indian reservation. What we didn't know is we'd have to piss like racehorses <laughs> at an Indian reservation. And the gentleman just uh, points to an adobe house out back, and we're like, really? Really? And I hadn't seen Breaking Bad yet, because it wasn't on TV, so I really didn't know to look for meth uh, or possibly a, a, an RV. But, uh, you know, we wound our way back there, and there's a computer monitor sitting in a, in a bathtub, I remember, and some old woman with no teeth sitting just outside a bathroom without a door and a wild dog walks through while I'm taking a leak. <laughs> a foreboding sign. So we get down the Oldsmobile, whether it's running or not, and we pushed it, and we got it going. And we're moving, we're mortaring, and we're going down. We're going down to Arizona. The Hoover Dam's coming up. We're finally gonna see something the momentous, you know, like something great. It's a symbol of Americana. It was right after 9-11. And they stopped us, and Fred starts talking to the guy. <laughs> and he comes back and says, this guy's from Philadelphia. He's going to let us pass. <laughs> Cop comes up to me and says, I want that fucking U-Haul taken apart. I want every piece out on the sidewalk. I said, really, Fred? Really? We unpacked 30% of my belongings right before the Hoover Dam. But we repacked it. And we made it across. And we did get to spend a night in Vegas. And we made it to California. Barely. <laughs> so a year later, when they offered a tax break for filmmakers back in PA and that terrible briefcase of uh, prospects didn't live up, I decided to come back on Valentine's Day <laughs> with a certain somebody <laughs> who had accumulated a lot of points with Indian Reservation casinos. <laughs> And why did I come back on February 14th? Because I am a romantic son of a bitch. Thank you. Uh, boom! Boom, shot.
shakalaka. Did you ever get that, Jeff? Did anybody ever say boom shakalaka? That's the first one? 